talking about the potential now, the stage is set, the technology is already here for massive interconnections and that means massive connections to smart networks. Great. What does that have to do with water? We're seeing massive networks of, of very cheap, inexpensive sensors, right? So these ones, in fact, this particular one uh, can be tapped in like a service connection into a pipe. The challenge with any of these smart network technologies is going to be that they've got to have very little installation or operating costs or they're just not viable. If you want to saturate a distribution system, you're going to need to do it with very cheap sensors, not only cheap to buy, but cheap to maintain, cheap to install, no reagents. One of the smart network providers, uh, Census, recently wrote a white paper that said if the 180 biggest utilities on the planet were to adopt smart network technology, it was estimated they'd save about 12.5 billion annually just in smarter operations and maintenance costs alone. So in smart networks, we talk a lot about event detection systems, which means you take data from multiple sensors, fuse them together, right? And then you can detect events. So we really look at an understand, optimize, and operate model when we're talking about deploying a smart networks. And we're talking about traceability of water, treating it like a food product. We're working with a project in an Ontario municipality. We're literally, it's being treated, the water being produced in the plant is being treated like a food product with full traceability from plant to tap. Right? And they want a stamp of approval of that water going out of the system. Our personal read is that this is an early adopter part of the market still. You're not going to see these everywhere all of a sudden instantly. Right? It's a, it's a challenging market to enter. We feel that the good operators are probably going to be the early adopters and the good are going to keep on getting better. You've got to be able to provide systems that don't give you false positives. So. You don't want guys running around looking for leaks that don't exist, and that's currently the state of the art, to be quite honest. It has to be cheap enough that people will deploy this on a wide scale. There has to be the economic benefit. Um, and if you don't show that to the clients, you really can't do this. Cities have a lot of untapped data assets. And in many cases, uh, this exists. You don't have to buy it. You don't have to generate it. But you do have to recognize it, find it, and kind of organize it. And that's what, uh, that's the capacity that we're working with municipalities to develop. When you organize this, it enables uh, data-driven policy and uh, evidence-based uh, planning conversations. So an integrated water, land use, and demographic database allows cities to target conservation program messaging. It also informs land use and the planning approval process. So I think one of the real benefits that we've seen is this allows water system managers to begin to engage land use planners uh, in conversations and it raises an understanding and a literacy around the water system, something that, that maybe land use planners never really thought uh, very much about. It allows you to begin to target uh, infrastructure expenditures or deferrals. If you're working in a municipality, you understand that most elected officials are visual learners. And if you can give them a map and show them uh, how that water system uh, works in, in with spatial reference, then, then I think you've got, uh, my experience is you've got their attention. We're helping to create that data uh, literacy and that appreciation for system thinking that I think is really important step on the road to being a, a, a smart city. The emerging water crisis in the world is very likely not to be solved in total on the supply side but rather on the demand side. We can't just build new dams and pipelines and huge reverse osmosis desalination plants forever. One of the huge drivers that's driving smart grid for water in the world is demand management and behavior modification of customers in the presence of real-time data. But in the end, it's just economics and it's just about using less water in most cases, or at least understanding where our water is, and it's about providing customers with more information. We, in our own utility, built a geospatial cloud-based back office for small utilities for ourselves. And the reason was, was to try to increase revenue, decrease costs, delight customers, and preserve water. There's $12 billion on the operating costs that could be saved just by harnessing that data and, and driving costs out of operation. But don't forget, there's a material amount of money on the table on the revenue side as well. Most cities can't tell you how many meters they have, or when they do, they're lying. 
And the reason I know this is because we own utilities and we didn't really know how many meters we had. And I, they were brand new, these utilities. And so we always had a huge disparity between pumped and built. And it took a long time to realize that there was meters in our system that were not in our customer information and billing system. And those meters, uh, is basically you're leaking water that you could otherwise sell. We developed a methodology to catch all of that water and harmonize the difference between what you pump into your system and what your customers use and, and, and watch that in real time. And when you have that data, then you finally know where all your water is going. And in most cases, revenue will tick up immediately in utilities between five and 20%. You imagine just figuring out and putting all your customers' meters in your customer information system could generate 10 or 20% increase in revenue that's found money.